Hello. This video is a part of a series of videos on making CAM for the Bechtel Center at Purdue. Last video, we made this progression, starting from, this, from the raw stock, moving on to our first operation, and then finishing off with our last operation. Now we need to go and actually make use of this and import our tables and import everything else before we can actually get ready and make some CAM. To do that, we need to make yet another file. Cool. And you can save this file as op, as something op1. In this case, because I'm making the BADC1, I'm going to name it BADC, uh, BADC1 op1. And op1 stands for operation one. When you make the second half of your setup, then you will then you could name it op2, or you can you can potentially make them both in the same file that would bypass that whole thing. But in this case, op1 is what I'm going to name it because it's going to be the first operation. Great. So the first thing we need to do is insert, derive, and we need to go and, ins and import our um, from our steps file. Cool. And in this case, we just want to go and import all of the uh, import all of this except for the last model. And the reason for that is that right now we're, we're only making the first operation. So we, the last model doesn't matter because we're going from this to this. Great. So now we have two models imported. Now you'll notice that there's a small problem and that our models kind of float around. Our joint didn't copy over. So the way you can do that is you can select these two models like that. You can select them both by holding control and, and clicking on them both. Right click and then click a rigid group. Press OK. And this just tells Fusion to treat them as one body. Cool. Next thing we need to do is we need to go and import our table model. And this is just a model of how the table in this in the machine is set up. All the vices and all the probing bits and every, everything. Just and make sure that you don't accidentally machine something that you weren't supposed to. So to do that, you go back into the work holding stocks and machines project. Same place you got your stock. Fusion's being a little bit slow today. There we go. Uh, scroll down to the tables. And here we, you see we have, we have a couple of tables. Uh, the SR100 is the wood gantry router. And that's not what we're using for this. At least not what I'm using for mine. If you are using it, then that's what you'll use. Uh, the, the two important ones here are the VF2 and the VF4 floor axis. The VF4 is a, is a larger machine. And so if you're making larger parts than it is, then, then you can use that. In this case, my part is more than small enough to fit inside the VF2, so that's what I'm going to use. So to import, import the table model, click on it, and then just drag it in. You see it's going to take Fusion one second. And there we go. I'm going to press OK. And you'll, you'll see here that last video I talked about the different levels of flatness. And you'll see here that uh, the different jaws that I was talking about. These are the snap jaws, and they can clamp on, and they can clamp onto stock that has those extruded out of the factory sides. And the way they do that is, I'm not sure if I can show that to you here if it's modeled, but basically they, they have little tiny teeth that, that can grip onto the stock really well, even if it's not super flat. Now, the downside of this is that they do live, leave little tiny marks, marks on your stock because of those little tiny teeth. However, in this case, my stock is machined flat, so I'm just going to use these flat jaws over here. Cool. Uh, but now you'll notice that these two models are not, not put together. So before, before we can do anything else, we need to go and, and put these models into the same space so that we can tell Fusion, hey, you're going to start with this, and you're going to end with this, but you won't you want to move it three feet to the right or something. So the first thing we need to do, we need to joint, our, joint again and joint our two pieces of stock together. Cool. Once again, it flipped, so I'm just going to flip it back. And there you go. Now you can see that there's one little package of a model. Now the one downside is that you can't see the model anymore because there's a chunk of stock in the way. To do that, find the appropriate stock. It's this one. Right click on it and select your opacity setting. 
In this case, I'm going to set mine to 40%, but you can play around and see what looks best to you. There you go. Now you can see that even though that there is a model in the way, we can see through it and still see our and still see our our desired second, our designed result. In this case, you can also see that from top distance, from, from the top of the model to the top of the stock. Excellent. Now that we have this completed, we could we could join the join the part into the vice, but there is one one thing we we need to do. And remember how in the how in the first steps file, when we made a change to our cuboid stock, it made a change in our steps file. And in some cases like that, that's a great thing. We wanted to do that. In other cases like this, if somebody makes a change to the VF to, to this VF2 model, we don't want it to update in our version because let's say someone changes how far open the jaws are. That what 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 is correct for their setup is probably not correct for mine. So we need to break the link and tell Fusion, hey. Don't make those updates. To do that, right click on the VF2 model and then break link. We have the same, hey, you moved stuff around error as last time. And I'm going to just cap capture position. And this will take Fusion one second to go and recalculate all of the geometry. There we go. There we go. Now you can see that the, the little chain, and there's no little chain or no little arrow by the VF2, which means that this model is just, is no longer linked to anything else. Cool. Now we need to join our model to our vices. To do that, we press J for joint, rotate down and select the bottom, of, bottom center of our model. Then we want to join that to the center of the, the vices. And that center is marked with a little black dot can see one here, one here, and then the last one is here. And that will always stay in the direct center of the vices, even if they open or close or any of that. In this case, I'm going to go and use the snap jaws. And you can see that only part of the model moved. And that's actually normal because this is just a preview of what is going to happen. Once we press OK, then the entire rest of the model will come along like that. Great. Now there is one other issue. That is that if you go and look at the model, you can see it is phasing through the solid, solid material of the jaws. Now clearly, this is not what is going to happen in real life. We need to go and make the jaws open up a little bit farther. To do that, we go in, can go into Modify, Change Parameters. You see we have a bunch of parameters we can change. The important ones for us in this case are jaw gaps. And in my case, because I'm using the short snap jaws, I will go and change this from one inch to whatever the, the width of my stock is, in this case, two inches. Now that I press OK, you can see that the jaws updated in the background. If I press OK, you can see that now we no longer have that phasing through issue. And actually, this is a good time to mention why I use the snap jaws instead of the flats for this part. The reason is because of this little bit of clearance right here. Because the snap jaws have a much shorter distance right here, this distance versus this whole distance over here, the part will move up slightly higher in the jaws, leading to less chance of collision. All right. Now, finally, the, the last thing we have to do is we need to go and join our table model to the origin. So right now, you can see that even if I don't pan the scene around, I can just grab the table model and fling it around wherever I want. And that's not ideal because basically you're, you're telling the machine that the table model is moving all on its own. Right? Well, I need to go and regenerate all the stuff because you go, went and moved the table model an inch to the left. And that's not ideal. To fix that, we need to go and join it to the or the vice model to the origin. And right now you can't see the origin. To turn it on, click this little eye next to origin. And you can see that now the whole thing pops up. So just press J. And then go and join any point on the vice. I like this one to the center of the origin. And now, if you press OK again, now you can see that even if I try and drag the vices around, nothing happens because they're now grounded. Excellent. That is all for the table setup. The next thing we need to do is make our manufacturing setup, but that will happen in the next video. Thank you very much.